kindness. He was loved gratefully by his family, people that came in contact with him. And he seemed to have been a different kind of congressman or elected official. Uh, he didn't forget where he came from. And all of the things that I heard about him, and like I said, there were so, so many things said. And of course, I did not take notes, but it was just a pleasure to know that we were affiliated with Congressman Jack Thomas Gregory Singh. So at this time, I would like to ask for a moment of silence in his memory. Thank you. At this time, we'll have roll call. And what I want to know about my uh, district, the number of people here, so it can be recorded over there. All right, post one. I mean, people are present. If you're on post one, raise your hand and stand up. All right, we've got three, four, one in the back. Okay. So we've got four. All right, post two. Five. Well, I'm, I'm actually doing that too. All right, post three. Raise your hands if you're on post three. All right, we have. Three people. Three voting, right? Three three voting post members. Four. 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 Yeah, two here, two. All right. Eva Smith. Just vote. Uh, okay. We've got how many? Three? Three. Three. All right, post four. We've got three. Post five. Four. Post six. Um, one of the post members texted me a little bit earlier. She accidentally went to the wrong library, but it's coming. So there, so there will uh, Corey McDougall. So she okay. Well, we'll change that number when she gets here. All right. So it's yeah, right now. Huh? Raise your hands again. Post six. Two. Two. Post seven. Two. Okay, post eight. Two. All right, at large, post nine. How many people we have in post nine? All right, we've got three. At large, post 10. We've got three. No, okay. Four. Okay, now let me say this regarding Pat Hughes. She stood up for her post, but she's been at large post. I'm just sitting back there. Huh? I just oh, you just sitting back there. Okay. With your, you were in the count earlier, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so how she's many? She's okay. I mean, I lost track of All right, post 10 again. Raise your hand. All right, we have four. Wow. Okay. I see three, four. You make five. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. You should have a copy of the minutes from our August meeting. All right, if you would take time to look through those minutes, and I will entertain a motion for adoption of these minutes if they are not correct. I 
Madam Chairman, now yeah. I have a question. It said that something they needed someone to fill the term uh, for William Barrett. Uh huh. And then and the next couple of sentences it says Val was voted to fill William. When when was he voted in to fill? In August. That's the August the same day. The same day. All right. Any other questions or comments regarding that? If not, can I get a motion to move to accept that? David? I saw a motion. motion. Okay. Well, I'll second. <clears throat> All right, it has been properly moved and seconded to accept the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any questions? All in favor of motion say aye. 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 Opposed with the same. All right, so the minutes are adopted. Okay. All right, at this, thing, at this time, we have with us our former mayor, and I'm going to ask her to come forward. really great to be with you and there's never been a more important time to be a Democrat in Georgia folks. Uh, let's talk about it a little bit. I want to tell you all how important the work you do is. All right, you've been tilling the field for a very long time and finally the harvest is here <laughs> because we are indeed a blue state and the truth is we've been a blue state for years but Democrats don't vote and when they do vote, their votes aren't being counted. All right, and I think we saw that this last time around. And so your efforts, your leadership, you getting out there and making sure that more people come to the polls so that even if there is something going on, we can outweigh them with numbers, right? And, and we gotta fight it on every single front by turning up the volume of the vote, by making sure the process gets better, and we're doing that on many different levels. It starts right here with the grassroots with you guys, with this organization, with the organizations we have in 159 counties. Each one of them is critically important to getting pro progressive leaders in place and getting progressive policies in place. And I just want to speak to the somber events of the past couple of days. Tripp and I left this morning to come here. The news, of course, was on and we were hearing about uh, the devastating, the jarring news of uh, Governor, Governor Northam in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it reminded me of a couple of things. And, and I feel certain uh, that he is going to step down. I don't know what the delay is, um, but the fact of the matter is, when it comes to this type of generational bigotry, we have accepted so much for so long. You know, it, it really is as somebody who's been around a little while, not as long as some of you, but longer than others. Um, what we accepted is being okay. It's really shocking to think about it. You know, these years we lived and we rocked on. We rocked on with from the Me Too movement as a woman. Everyone in this room can tell you about it. A lot of men in the room can tell you about things they saw going on. And, and then it's just people of conscience, people of good conscience. What we just walked by, it's not going to be tolerated anymore. And it's up to the Democrats and the progressive movement to show there is a firm and stable hand on the progress of humanity. Okay? And that government matters. And government can help us be a better people. But that can't happen if we don't have the process in place to get the right people in leadership and to insist on the right, just policies. And that's where you guys come in. That's how critical you are. We think the people we elect are the end-all, be-all. It's you guys. 
it's you guys making that difference. And so, Sandra, thank you for your service, and thank you for the quiet volunteers and leaders. I see you. I see you everywhere I go making it happen. And I thank God for you. Because you are going to be the stewards of this new era we are entering. It's a better day. The young people do not think like we do. They are intolerant of intolerance. They won't have it. They won't walk by anything. And, and it's our job, our duty, to make sure they have a structure to inherit for their progressive, solution-based ideals. They're going to take us there. And it's really dependent on you all and dependent on what happens in 2020. So thank you. The elections you hold today are critically important. Your efforts, your volunteerism, your leadership, your tirelessness. We see you. We thank God for you. And I am so proud to be a Muscogee Democrat. Thank you all. Thank you, Mayor Thomas. Hey. <laughs> you will always be our mayor. Oh, <laughs> okay, at this time we will have. Uh, well, we've talked about the. Uh, we've introduced our post, new post members. Will all new post members please stand? All new post members. <laughs> Now, based on uh, what we had, we usually had three people per post, but we have increased the post by five people per district. We are still short one or two people, I think, in District 6, seven. in District 7. Two and seven. Six and seven? No, no. Two, two, and, two, seven. Seven. two and seven. So really, that should be more people here today than we have. So those folks members who, who are missing today's meeting, I have not heard from them to say whether or not they were going to be here. But it is important that you attend these committed meetings and uh, do what you need to do as a representative of your district. Okay. All right, I don't have any correspondence to share with you. Yes. Can we get the names of other people in the post? And so we can keep tabs and like maybe somebody from post seven could contact the others and say. Right, well that's going to happen. Uh, we have got to get all the contact information and having to prepare the state report. I will be combining all of that information and it will be up to the next chair to email it to you. <laughs> Thank you so uh, you will be getting that information. Uh, it's very important, let me say this while I, we're talking about the post. It's very important as post members, you're representing your district. And this is something I tried to convey to everybody over the past two or three years. Uh, the, you, you have responsibilities. You need to get out and know who's living in your area. Let them know that you are here and ready to work and answer any questions they might have regarding things that are happening. They have concerns. And you, you are going to learn that there are a lot of things we need to deal with. We've got caucuses on different things, such as uh, uh, so we we'll mentioned it in that come up with <laughs> But anyway, the handicap, something deals with those people. They want to know about the legislature dealing with the handicap. They want to know about green space. We have a new caucus that came up, I think, a couple of years ago for green space. And there are other things. So on the application, I think they put some out there. Yeah. They have listed on there the uh, committees and the caucuses that you need to sign up for. Once you sign up for those, they will be compiled and the caucuses will be sent to the state. 
Uh, they have one list of eyes, so that means the list that they have will have to be updated. But uh, your responsibility is uh, pretty big. It's bigger than you can imagine. Yes, Harry. Can you explain uh, for, for, uh, for those who are new to, uh, to the proposed committee, the difference between committees and caucuses? Explain what? The difference between committees and caucuses. Okay, the caucuses are, well, the caucus is a committee, but it's a special committee because it's dealing with a special topic. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, it's, it's dealing with special things. Uh, such as, like I say, um, the handicap is a caucus. You got a caucus for the Asian Americans. You got a caucus for African Americans. And on that, it's about eight or nine caucuses that deal with that specific topic. And those are the things that we have got to be concerned about here. We have got to include our Hispanic population in our group which has been hard to do. Uh, we have to have some diversity here. We need a lot of diversity because if we're not reaching out to them, then who's reaching out to them? Who's reaching out to them? The Republicans. So we have got to uh, work as your post committee. You all can meet and plan whatever you want to do that's going to benefit the committee and meet the requirements of the state and i must say right now it's been hard to communicate with the state uh because it's a little turmoil going there they've got to replace people i called the state and i'm still getting answer machines talking about obama <laughs> uh, i'm getting answer machines that tell me I'm on maternity leave, which was last year. So they haven't even updated their uh, answer machine, the messages that they need to put on there. So it's been hard. And right now, I've been in touch with Sarah Todd and Bobby Hughes, who is the second congressional district chair. So those are the only people that I've been able to communicate with because others are not answering. But anyway, we will be squared away. All right. Officers' reports, and I will start with my, my report. Uh, all right, this is just a brief update of the status of the Muskogee County Democratic Committee. A more detailed report will be presented to the next post upon completion of the state report. Sarah Todd at the state level and Bob Fuse, the second congressional district chair, are aware of the steps that, that have been taken to elect additional post committee members and to get to the point where we are today. I have received permission from them to submit the state report following this meeting today so that the correct list of officers and new post com committee members will be included in the report. Had I tried to send them a report, it would have been the old report, and then it just means you had to come back and do it. And I didn't think that responsibility should be put on the next chair because it's part of the 2018 report. So I explained that to them. So we have, we're clear on that. Uh, the Muskogee County Democratic Committee took responsibility in working with the coordinated campaign by securing a headquarter, making sure that phones and Wi-Fi was available. Hats off to Adam Trocker for his leadership. Shut up, Adam. Yeah. 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 Okay, as chairman, I enjoyed working with him and his staff of volunteers. Hats off to all of you who participated in the election process. Just remember, it is not over. It is not over by no means. We still have much more work to do. Since our August meeting, we began moving fast after receiving word that Stacey Abrams would be our speaker for the MCDC first True Blue Gala. Thanks to Manor Hall for researching to find a new name for our fundraiser. 
we had about 28 days to make a successful event, and with your support, <coughs> the gala was a success. We were able to give Stacy $6,000. I was so excited over this event because I wanted to I wanted to see it come to fruition because the committee needed it. We needed something to boost us on up and let the public know that we are here. One move that has been made is to increase the size of the post committee. It is hoped that the result of this has brought in individuals who are willing to attend our meetings and willing to work in harmony and fellowship, be able to contribute to the mission of the Democratic Party, and be willing and able to work and talk with your local committee leadership before taking this cooperation, dedication, and success or on the horizon for the Muscogee County Democratic Committee. That's my report. <laughs> All right, our treasurer is not here, but he did submit a financial report. He had a conflict in his schedule. But based on the report, uh, we had uh, total expenditures of $5,658.63, and the current balance is $8,391.10. you give that balance again, please? The current balance is eight thousand. You should be getting a copy of the treasury report. Eight thousand three hundred ninety-one dollars and ten cents. Thank you. Are right, any questions regarding um, the treasurer's report? Yes, ma'am. Uh, where is the information from the money we took in at the True Blue Diala? Okay, that's coming up. He should, it is not reflected here. It's no. probably mixed in with his money. But uh, he did send a financial report on the True Blue Gala. And I don't want to pass it out because I see some, there's some names missing or something. But as far as the total expenses, the total revenue for the True Blue Gala was 39000 Sixteen dollars, thirty-nine thousand sixteen dollars. That was the total revenue. Total expenses, twenty thousand two hundred thirty-two dollars and eighty-two cents. Net income, eighteen thousand seven hundred eighty-three dollars and eighteen cents.
uh, question. All right, we've got uh, yeah, I have. Yes, ma'am. We have full participation from all members of the Democratic Party. No. Mm -hmm. I will make that under uh, uh, my helmet. All right, let's finish with this is the information submitted by the Treasurer, but we did not have full participation. Okay. All right, if there are no questions, we will accept the Treasurer's report. Or, and I'll say all of it because this report will be reflected in the state committee report. All right. Uh, Val, second vice chair, and he will give the state committee report also. Good morning again. Good morning. First thing, I'd like to thank many committee members that asked me to run for chair. I'm a vice chair. But I decided not to run for chair, not by any person, and I think it's that important. I think it's very important. And I've been doing a vice chair, working for the chair for a long time. Working for the chair is a very intensive job. And I feel that they're not very capable post member that can do the job. And as a just retired, I plan to do a lot of traveling. Thank you. But I've been running for the state committee. Okay, this is a report of the DPG meeting last uh, Saturday, that's the January 26th. Okay. Uh, I don't know if each one of you, I got a list of the uh, different offices that elected. You have a uh, Nima Williams, Nikki Ma Williams, elected in new chair, is a uh, new chair for the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the second district, you got the vice chair, the vice chair, couple vice chair, you got Tim Terry, vice chair, uh, you have Sarah Todd, the vice chair, B. M. Green is a vice chair, Adrian White, the vice chair, and secretary is J Justin Rotenbach, and treasury is. Jason Stevens is the only one who has connection with Columbus, but he's from Columbus. Mm. Um, I tell you, I tell you, but it's different part of this. Oh, okay. And uh, Bobby Hughes was re-elected as the district for the second district. <coughs> now, I pick up a few things that I think is some importance to us. Ms. Sarah Ruiz Aniko, mm -hmm. candidate for lieutenant governor, then make it. She went to a great length to explain how the result of the, of the election was screwed, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Calling my language. Mm -hmm. And he uh, showed how different the election machine, for example, uh, he can show that. The other lieutenant governor got both and one machine, but she didn't have both. So, got by everything. Also, the DPG uh, modifies bylaws by stating that the state committee members from the county Democratic Party Committee <coughs> must be elected every four years after the chair. So the chair of the Democratic Party elected the four years. So the committee members also should be elected after the chair, but doesn't mean <coughs> that it that should be elected right away or two months later or three months later. And also the congressional district chair must be elected or re-elected only by the state committee member that is physically resided in that district. Mm -hmm. <coughs> physically resided, as you know, like Columbus, for example. Is a county that is split in two districts. In the north, you have the third district, and the south, you have the second district. If you live on the north, like in the second, uh, you go in the post, second post, right, David? They can elect only the congressional district and the third district, and that's both of them. 
Mm -hmm. Before that, you know, we didn't go to the state part of the town. Mm -hmm. There's a two known products change <coughs> what the city should be about. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Uh, I, I, know, I think you said uh, that Jason Espez was the only uh, officer who was elected who's from who has roots in Columbus. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, Estevez, yeah. Um, also, Nakima Williams was born in Columbus as well. Yeah, but you don't live in Columbus. Oh, not. not much importance. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, you mentioned the Stevens person as uh, you know, a state committee member or some position. Um, where is he? I mean, no, we, no. we are the- Mr. Stevens is not a state committee member. He is a treasurer of the DBG. That's different. Statewide. So at the state level. I, I'm confused how <clears throat> anyone can be uh, an officer or have a position with the state Democratic Party if they are not active or at least known to their local democratic it is <coughs> well okay. he doesn't live he here anymore okay yes. fine okay patricia has something you want to address that sure we had a um, state committee elections and this is for the um executive committee for the entire state this is civis went to um he graduated with Dominic. he lives in atlanta now he's the um, president of the Atlanta School Board. This is for the entire state. Mm -hmm. So we, um, and actually, Nikita Williams, as you know, was born as a medical center. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. this, um, so we had um, the, um, the chair that, was, that ran, Nikita Williams, um, everyone that, um, that is in, I'm going to say, right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was Nikita Williams. And then the vice chair, and I'll just help you out there. Um, 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 the first vice chair is Ted Terry. He's actually the mayor of, of Clarkston. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, he's done statewide. You might have seen him on the clear eye. Sarah Todd, who's been down here, is the vice chair of, um, of um, county committees. We'll see a lot of her. She is from Newton County, so we have some rural um, um, mix in there. We have um, Adrian White, who's the chair of recruitment. She's already reached out to people down there. And um, she's at the Red Clay Democrats. And she's um, lives in Atlanta, where she's been around a lot. And then Fee Wynn, who um, is the chair of um, uh, um, constituencies, which is um, the, um, um, every constituency group that um, the chair, um, our chair, talked about with um, LGBTQ, um, disability, um, um, and, um, and, um, um, rural, all these, all that. She's on. Um, she's doing all that. Um, and um, Hispanic, of course. So she's doing that. She actually is. She is um, chair of. Um, and she um, is a representative, and she took Stacy's place. Stacy came out, she ran for that, and so she's doing a great job. So we have people that um, are representative of the state from the state from all over the state. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and they're, it's a pretty good geographic representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, one more Any comment. Uh, uh, just one more comment too regarding the state, the state committee election. Uh, the candidacies who were, uh, that were present at the, at the uh, that had registered or filed for the, before the deadline, on uh, January fifteenth, were all were very even more like from across the state as well. Uh, so we had people running like Fred Swan, who was running for you know, vice chair of candidate recruitment. We had Joey Trena from Augusta running for also for that position. We had um, at least four other people or uh, three or four other people running against Sarah Todd, um, although she won by far in that election for um, uh, for vice chair of, uh, of county liaison and uh, congressional district affairs. Um, including John Ring, uh, who's the husband of uh, Lisa Ring, who ran for first congressional district, and uh, it was a very packed election. Uh, but a lot, but uh, I guess the best person won for that. Uh, for best people won ran, uh, won for that uh, election as well for all seven seats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. If there are no other questions, then we will. Uh, we thank you for your report and make sure the. Uh, Secretary gets the copy of it. Okay. Uh, let's see. That takes care of the officer's report. All right, committee report. Laura Walker, you up. Keep this real quick. Hi, I'm Laura Walker. I am the Subcommittee Chair for Communications and Public Relations. I want to thank Harry uh, Underwood because both Harry and I were extremely 
involved with the fall elections. Mm -hmm. He was with Valerie Haskins, and I worked as a um, field organizer for the coordinated campaign. But we still kept Facebook posting. We yeah. still kept as many messages going out as we could. I think neither of us understood the time commitment that those jobs would mm -hmm. would entail yeah. uh, and thought that we could just do what we were doing on the side well <laughs> we tried and we did the best we could so i want to thank you for for helping with that we are still mm. uh, uh, please join our facebook page if you have not already and also twitter and um and, and if you are not getting our emails we are above we're about 550 people on our email list if you're not on it see me, mm -hmm. email me, um, or Harry, and let us know so we can add you, because that's the main way is that we um, communicate. Mm -hmm. We will now hopefully be getting our newsletter up and running again. Um, if you did not pick one up, they are out on our table. We did a special newsletter this time to thank Sandra for her years of service. Yes. Some happy, some challenging, but all of it was progress yes. moving forward. Um, so that is out there as well, as well as some great pictures from the community gala. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I have a little announcement to make since we are public relations and communications, and that is, and this is not official yet because we're not, uh, because Fair Fight Action has so many groups to add, that we have not officially been added to the list, but we will be hosting, not the MCDC, just um, Fair Fight mm -hmm. Action. Mm -hmm. um, they contacted Adam, and uh, we're going to be hosting a watch party for mm -hmm. the for Stacey Abrams' rebuttal to the State of the Union address. Yes. And it will be Tuesday night. The, um, the Midtown Jazz mm -hmm. and Blues Club mm -hmm. has agreed to open for us specially. They're not, they're not open usually, but they're going to have a private party for us to come in mm -hmm. and watch this rebuttal. Mm -hmm. It's going to start at 8.30. Those of you who can, you know, whose blood pressure can allow <laughs> to watch the State of the Union, they can be in another, in a certain section over there. Right. Those of us who are just waiting for Stacy will mm -hmm. be in the calm section over here, mm -hmm. you know, so, but please join us. We'll put that up mm -hmm. out via email and on Facebook as soon as we have the link. Mm -hmm. um, any questions? Uh, Where is it? Um, it starts at 8 30 and it's um, it's on the location. Yeah, 1818 Midtown Drive, right next to in a little complex next to our um, campaign office. It's beautiful in there. Those of you who haven't been inside since it was memory lane. <laughs> kind of, um, and, and please anyone correct me who knows more, mm -hmm. it stemmed from Fair Fight Georgia, which was formed immediately after the election by Stacey Abrams and, and her mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. to fight the injustices that had gone on during this last election. Well, lo and behold, we weren't the only state mm -hmm. that had cheating going on. Mm -hmm. And so they changed the name to Fair Fight Action. You'll also see some references to Fair Fight Activist. Some of the you know Facebook page are in that name. But they are, um, for example, in Georgia, they've already filed a lawsuit, a federal lawsuit, um, because uh, basically the bottom line is, mm -hmm. is the so Secretary of State's office in the state of Georgia infringed upon our constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. So this is happening all over the country. Mm -hmm. And so if you happen to check those watch parties that I was just alluding to, there's California, Washington, Chicago, Ohio, Texas, almost every state has one. Mm -hmm. People are still fully behind this cause, mm -hmm. this problem. We will not, and, and that's what Fair Fight Action is about. We're not going to stand for this anymore. Amen. We, we, I mean, the, the audacity. We all know what's happening. They know what's happening, mm -hmm. and it's still happening. Oh, yeah. So anyway, that is what Fair Fight Action is all about. And um, so join us for the watch party. It, I guarantee it's going to be fun. Yes. All right. All right. Is there anyone, the representatives of the planning committee, because I don't see John Land. 
Um, I can I can represent. So, okay. Anybody else here on that committee? Okay. Oh, Sandra. Okay, I see you. I'm trying to see who else is on the committee. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Harry, what do you want to say regarding this? Uh, so we had our, our first meeting of the year on um, like uh, last Saturday, if I'm correct, and we uh, we uh, it was a little breakout session where we talked about um, planning about uh, what events we're going to have for the uh, for uh, in the in the upcoming year. We planned another meeting for uh, for, you know, for uh, later in February on the state like the same I think it's third Saturday of the month um, in February, and also uh, we talked about. Um, for uh, future considerations about the structure um, for the party, for the county committee. Um, we talked about the state elect, the state committee election, and what will be, what we can uh, can learn from not just from other county uh, committees, but also from other states, and how to apply those, how to plan, uh, plan out the calendar uh, for other uh, committees, and how to work with other committees in order to have a fairly straight and fairly informed calendar uh, for 2019 and 2020. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, we're down to uh, unfinished business. Oh, and shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I missed you. Okay, Gail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, and Tom, where are you? Come on down, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Can't do anything without Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, me, Beth, Jackie, Beth, Jackie, Beth, Lauren, Mark, right. Mm -hmm. And the goal for the fundraising committee was to ensure that every fundraising activity has a quantitative monetary focus for profit, not just doing something to do something to be hustling around. We didn't want to hustle. We want to help support a con. But our our um, thoughts were we found a uh, goal and we also got up in our dream group today. Right. Then we said we wanted to say right? Yes. And then we got hyped up and mm -hmm. we got let down. Mm -hmm. But with, within a wink of an eye, it was like we said, everybody said, no, we can't get her, we're not doing it. And within two days, we got a yes. And we only had that 30 days that she spoke of to make. Our game was successful on September 8th. It was successful. And let me tell you, it was the Declaration Committee on um, Judy and Doug, Sandra with Judy on the journal, Tom doing everything, getting the money to Adrian, and me. Mm -hmm. Finding out I can sell tables, but you know what, Tom? That's a lady named Juanita Booker. Mm -hmm. Juanita Booker asked the question. Mm -hmm. Was there full participation for every member? No. You need to shake her hand mm -hmm. and give her some money. She participated for you because she actually had the top number of tables, so I think wow. six or seven. So you're talking about over oh, uh, how much money? You do that math. Mm -hmm. Fifty-six six, six, mm -hmm. six dollars. That's your lady. She was our top seller. But mm -hmm. along with her, myself, and Sandra, we made it to two hundred. Mm -hmm. That was our goal. Mm -hmm. Just merely 200 seats sold. Mm -hmm. When the three of us met that goal, the number of tables we sold, we said we can make it happen. And it did. Oh, my God. Oh, I had to go over there. It was almost 400. Yeah, almost 400. That's right. We were actually sold out, but they sold tickets at the door. We made it even more, but it was all right. <laughs> but we almost had 400 people at that yeah. event. You should give yourself a hand, because that's what 30 days does, mm -hmm. with five people. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if you put your in that bucket, don't tell me that's the right people. Mm -hmm. It was the right speaker at the right time. So we made it happen. And Ms. Juanita, you did ask that question, did everybody participate? No. Of course not. But these tables were filled. Yes. And we needed more. Mm -hmm. So on that behalf, I say that the fundraising committee did a great job. I want to thank Tom. Mm -hmm. But we're still here. The only recommendation that I bring to whomever or uh, for the Tribune Gala when we have the second one 
we need to adhere to a two week um, uh, we needed that deadline, but we went forward without it. We needed it. The trade center, center needed it because they didn't know if they had enough tables or enough cloths or silverware to accommodate that almost mm -hmm. So we need to have a post event meeting so that we can make sure our money is right. So when you ask us about the money, we can tell you immediately what we made and what our profit was. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we can give our speaker like we did to Stacey Abrams. Six thousand dollars because our goal was five, and when we made the profit, we were able to get six. Also, when we rent a building, we wanted to make sure in 2020 we had money in the bank, not a thousand dollars like we had this year, to put down on a building and make sure we can pay the, the utility for three months. And Adam knows utilities were high. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yes. But um, and always have a receipt book. And the other thing we want to incorporate, we had students. We had high school social studies students greeting our guests and meeting Stacey Abram and actually got to talk to her and shake her hand. So if we want to incorporate whether that's people being tired, we can use our students to do that for us. And I don't ever want to collect money at the door and leave. Let's not do that. <laughs> that's enough. And we just want to account for every expense we ask. So when I first look at the data, I didn't see the journals there. He went back to make sure it was incorporated. So as a team, we did a great job of five, five people seeing. And we want to thank all of you guys. Again, when it comes time to give, give like Ms. Booker, mm -hmm. do a great job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, we're now we're back, so I'll finish this. Okay. All right. Is there any unfinished business that needs to come before? Yeah. Because I can't think of anything that we need to that was started and not completed. Uh, one thing I would like to say under unfinished business, I guess it's unfinished regarding our bylaws. Um, we attended. Uh, a meeting, Tom and who else? Who else attended that meeting? Uh, where was it? At Cordell or where did we go? Yeah, Cordell. Cordell. And at that time, uh, I asked them when did the state plan to finish the bylaws because we wanted our bylaws to make sure they are in line with the state. Well, that was what over a year ago almost two years ago they said that they were working on the bylaws and the bylaws should be fit well as of today nothing else has been done regarding the bylaws but one thing we do want to deal when we update our bylaws we had as chairman i appointed a financial secretary and that office is very important so uh, Technically, you know, most organizations, they don't want the treasurer to have to receive and receive money. All the treasurer needs to do is deposit the money and keep a record. So we had appointed uh, a financial secretary, and uh, we stated that when the bylaws are reviewed, that that office will be uh, added. All right. Now we're getting down to the good part. I don't seem too happy. <laughs> You're ready to go. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> All right, we're going into, uh, well, it's not new business, but before the election of office, is there any new business to come before this body? Anything new? Yes, Harry. I, 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 I'm sorry, I just want to like also suggest like a, um, a bylaws revision uh, that we, that I uh, also seem to write. Uh, as well. Um, one regarding uh, the addition, in, when we do finally revise our uh, bylaws, to uh, add a section on resolutions in order to allow for uh, that particular part of like uh, our particular order in order to be incorporated into our county uh, our uh, county bylaws, so that we can um, have a have a mechanism within our bylaws to um, to draft, to write, to submit, to approve resolutions of the post of the post committee. 
in order to uh, use those as like uh, as statements, collective statements of the of the uh, those committee, because that's within the section within the Robertson's order and included in the last and just when I didn't ask for that. Okay, Harry, if you would write that up and send it to me, yes. I'll make sure to make sure you. <laughs> okay. All right. Ms. Pat Hugh Green. All right, you come up. All right, let, let me say this. Number one, we want a smooth election. We don't we want to run this election as quietly and professionally as possible. Um by now, some of us have not learned to agree and disagree, but there is such thing as agreeing and disagreeing lovingly. <laughs> so, uh, Pat Hughes Green is going to conduct the election for us. And I want to say thank Tom uh, McDaniel for pulling everything together regarding the election with. Uh, Dominique Perkins was over, but Dominique had a conflict in schedule, so we have had to make these changes. So if we take a minute so you all can get your paperwork she needs to see. Yeah, I'm just going to say thank you for this chance. And the other thing, right now, I need to uh, get, uh, what, three dollars? Okay, yeah, I forgot. We had a post member to come in. Actually, three. Three, three came three in. Percent. Okay, change. Uh, raise your hand. Four, uh, which is it, five, right? One, one additional person on five. Yes, so sir. that makes you five? Yes, sir. Five for five. Great. Okay, <laughs> and young lady in the back, what district? Uh, you need to come up and sit with district six, please. Uh, district six, one additional. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have three and six. And there was one other person. Oh, oh, Marjorie. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, you're in uh, nine. I No, no. But I mean, you're, you're nine. So how many? We All right, people in District Nine, raise your hand. Marjorie, raise your hand. Well, yeah, but that's okay. So you're there. Are four, four Four in District Nine. Okay. Okay, so that that should be the count now, right? All right. Now each district is supposed to have uh, a run, someone to come up and get the ballots for your district. Is that you all have cleared that up? You know who's going to do it from your district? All right. Okay. Uh, Tom. All right, just wait and get out. Hold on, hold on, yeah. Hold on one second, we're going to do one office at a time, correct? Before the runners come, I do want to say good afternoon. And uh, this is the part we've been waiting for, so hopefully we can do this very smoothly. If we have one person from each district be prepared. We're going to do one office at a time. The first office, the official ballot is for chair. And I'm going to, there are two names on there. You'll see them when you get your ballots um, that were turned in um, to Dominique prior to deadline. Harry Underwood and Laura Walker. You might want to just stand up, Laura Walker. Harry Underwood, running for chair. Okay, district runners. Okay, so uh, I'll just hand you We have Harry District 4 gets 4. Uh, district 1 gets 4. District 1. Who's District 1? Oh, okay. Yeah, she's going to be 
Now again, we want to listen. Okay, at this time, we'll open the floor for chairman for nominations from the floor. Are there any nominations from the floor for the position of chairman? And what you will do is write that name in on your cards that you have. Chairperson. Chairperson. Any nominations from the floor? All right, we will, hearing none, we will close um, the nominations from the floor. And we have uh, Laura Walker and Harry Underwood. Do you want to give you how many? 30 seconds? Two minutes. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. <laughs> 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> you have a question, man? Oh, no. I was going to move the clothes on the last song um, from the set, on the name. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a motion to close the nominations from the floor. Second. There's a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, say the same. Thank you. Ms. Laura Walker, since you were first on the, we'll go in that order. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Walker. I thought I was going to have two minutes, so I'm going to make this 30 seconds. Real quick. I don't want to have to whisper, I'm a, I'm a Democrat anymore. Yeah. This is a red, this is a Democratic town and a Democratic state. I just finished working on the coordinated campaign. I've lived here for 23 out of the last 27 years coming here as a military spouse and now staying as a retiree. Um, we have to be heard. We have to be seen as Democrats, as the caring people that work for everyone, not just our side of the house. So I am running because I have the time, I have the energy, and I have the passion to take our large group get us all working on a task that we feel is important to us and making a difference, not only in Muskogee County, not only in Southwest Georgia, but in the state. Thank you very much. Hello, Democrats. Um, so my name is Harry Underwood. Um, I've been a volunteer with your county committee, with this county committee since uh, 2014. We're at Masters since 2015, um, and I've managed campaigns and been a field organizer since, 20, uh, since 2016. And I have been in the uh, been in the trenches uh, with county with uh, with campaigns in the local area and we uh, and, and around West Georgia for Valerie Haskins, for Sylvia Hudson, for Jim Barksdale. And I am so committed to uh, to, to bring my expertise into the role of chair 
to help with leadership and to work with you as the county committee chair so that we can go into 2020 for both local and statewide elections and federal elections to elect Democrats all down the tickets. And I would ask for your votes to, uh, for, uh, to the next chair. Thank you so much. Thank you to both of you for And also put your district number at the top. Please print your name and sign the ballot and add your district and vote for a candidate. Office is for vice chair. First vice chair. The names that were submitted were Karen Hunts, Huntsman and Darian Torbert for first, first vice chair. Karen Huntsman, are you here? Yes, okay. I'm right here. And Darian Torbert, two seats away. Okay, we will take nominations from the floor. I'll open it up for nominations from the floor. 
Okay. Any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations for first vice chair from the floor? There is a motion to move for the nomination from the floor to be closed. There's a second. All in favor? Uh, that sounded unanimous. And all opposed, same sign. All right, nominations from the floor are closed. If your runners would come and tell me the number of ballots that you need. And those two candidates, will you prepare for 30 seconds One is always to introduce no. yourself? Focus is not so much to be a member of the Democrats as it is to further the progress of our society, mostly Columbus. So mm -hmm. I will be holding everyone in this room to, I guess, the standard of virtue I would want to be held to. Uh, vote your values. Yes. Right. Amen. Thank you so very much. Good. Okay, start voting. Thank you, 
Oh, I got one. Okay, moving right along. Next office is for second vice chair. Second vice chair. And we only have one name submitted um, by the deadline, and that's Sandra Ellison. Mm. I don't know her. <laughs> Nominations from the floor for second vice chair. Second vice chair. Nominations are open from the floor. Nominations from the floor are open. Motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, the same sign. Yay. Ayes have it. We have a question. A motion? The motion is to accept the one nominee. Second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. All right, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. The second vice chair is Sandra Ellison because she was the only one. We're, we have counties in the back who will be tallying the rest and we'll have the results shortly. Mm -hmm. All right, next office is recording secretary. Recording secretary. One name submitted by the deadline, and that is Pam Parker. So, I'm sorry, Sandra, did you want to say anything? <laughs> 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 Pam Parker. She said, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for the tug and the, and the toe to make her serve as um, first vice, second vice. Mm -hmm. Recording secretary, we have one name, Pam Parker. Yeah. There's Pam Parker. I will open up nominations from the floor for recording secretary. Any nominations from the floor for recording secretary? So that's second. All right, we got a motion and a second to close the nominations from the floor for recording secretary. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Another motion? I hope we accept her by acclamation. Yes. All right, it's been motion and second to accept the recording secretary Pam Parker by acclamation from the floor. Yes, second. All opposed? All in favor, I'm sorry. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Yes. All right, Pam Parker, congratulations. Would you mind standing and introducing yourself? Hey, y'all. I'm Pam Parker. Um, I uh, am a retired teacher and in two thousand Parker and I said, things are not going right in the United States of America, and we are getting involved in the Democratic Party. 
because we're lifelong Democrats. I, too, Karen, am a voting rights advocate. We started with poll watchers. We went down to Randolph County when all that stuff started and collected signatures and worked with the NAACP and Black Lives Matters down there. And I just want y'all to know that I have a lot of experience taking minutes and I type really fast. Yes. <laughs> Moving on to the corresponding secretary, uh, one name submitted by the deadline is Tammy Bailey. I'll hey. open up. Uh, Ms. Bailey, you stand. Okay, now we'll open nominations from the floor for the position of corresponding secretary. Any nominations from the floor for the position of corresponding secretary? Mm. There's a motion for the nominations to be closed for the floor. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm closing sign. Ayes have it. Tammy Bailey, congratulations. Hi, Thank you. 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 I uh, probably didn't take it quite seriously until 2016. I voted in every major election, but as of 2016, it's election for dog catcher. I will be running <laughs> mm -hmm. for Democrats. Okay, so I believe in it. I show up and I work on it. So I'm going to be doing it for a Thank you so very much and congratulations. Next official ballot on the office is for treasurer. Two names have been submitted by the deadline. Maddie Hall mm -hmm. and Marjorie Jackson. Mm -hmm. And at this time, I'll take nominations from the floor. Are there any nominations from the floor for the position of treasurer? Mm -hmm. Any nominations from the floor for the position of treasurer? Motion to close nomination. There's a motion to close second. nomination. And second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Eyes have it. All right, runners, if you would come. Maddie Hall, would you, if you would take 30 seconds to introduce yourself, and Marjorie Jackson, please get ready. That's me. I'm from Columbus, Georgia. I've been in this party, in this call party now, for quite a long time. I've grown with each position given to me. My most proud position was my Sandra Gate. She wanted me to be be the secretary. I said, I'll do it, but I'm doing fundraising. So I did greater at fundraising than I did at secretary. So please forgive these comments. I came prepared because the treasurer needs to be prepared and ready to go. Mm -hmm. So I brought my own little vote from Maddie P. Hall mm -hmm. because this is the right time. The time is always right to do the right thing. And do the right thing here in Columbus, Georgia is to get active. In 1965, I desegregated Columbus High School. Ooh. So I know the challenges here. 
I know what black, white, Hispanic can be about. Mm. I know when someone hurts your feelings when they talk about the color of skin. Mm. But greater than that, I went and got an education at Spelman, and I know Stacey Abrams. And she was our legal advisor. Ooh. I know to get up and do the right thing is not see color. Mm -hmm. Just work and just be on time. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. All right, Marjorie. Hello. 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 Hi, my name is Marjorie. I've been in Columbus for the last 17 years. I'm from Detroit. I have been a Democratic for all my for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I've been participating in the various elections for the last few years. I have 20 years in accounting, Ooh. and I know the numbers, and I love to work with the numbers. I don't know why the Lord put me there. <laughs> there to do numbers, so mm -hmm. I have the background and experience, so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to work with you guys if you have me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. All right, let's go. of officers thank you so very much for your participation and we will wait on our counters to tell that they are working very hard out right there okay while we're waiting where did he go uh harvard where did he go well, he I was going to have him to come up and he wanted to say some words and, um, on behalf of Ed yeah, Harrison, but he's back. <laughs> All right, look, help us dispose of this food over here. <laughs> All right, we're supposed to be out of here by two o'clock. No, one thirty. Oh, is it two? Oh, I thought it was two. Okay, sorry. 
But we can okay, but we can get a lot of uh, some things done. For instance, the clip boys, I don't think you need them any longer. Uh, uh, so if you can so though someone will come along and pick them up. Make sure you have signed in. If you have not signed in, Tom is holding the sign in sheet up here. We want to make sure, especially these post members, because this is the record of your attendance, and it starts today. Okay. Any other post members have a sign? Okay, if you would uh, listen to these, the librarian asked that these announcements be made to you, and we do thank uh, them for giving us this time and space today. The first announcement they want you to be aware of, Dr. Wayne Wiegand, and I guess I'm, it's W-I-E-G-A-N-D, that is, he's going to be here on the desegregation of libraries in the Jim Crow South. Uh, he's going to be discussing his book about how the South public libraries uh, were desegregated through a combination of political and social pressure. That's going to take place February the 6th at 6.30 in this room. Uh, the second and last announcement for the library. All right, I cannot talk over you. Legal clinic at the library. Muskogee County Coroner, Mr. Buddy Bryan, will share about preparing a Georgia will and other services available for free through the coroner's office. This will take place. February the 21st at 10 a.m. in this room. So be cognizant of those two announcements. Thank you. All right. Uh, Pat, are you ready? Okay. I, I was just gonna do it for my family before I have Girl Scout cookies for sale if you'd like to see <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements <laughs> from the group? <laughs> Claudia Mueller, it's uh, also the segregation of the Columbus Museum at, I mean, the Columbus Library is at the Columbus Museum next Thursday at 6 o'clock. <laughs> the Rothschild Lecture Series might be, it is, okay. All right, uh, just announcement, I was about to make it. Uh, Sisters Angus is having a roast party, Women of Courage Breakfast on Monday, March 4th. And we are asking you to support it. The tickets can be received. Yeah. Well, you can get tickets from Linda Parker. Oh, I need a book on myself. Oh, and Sandra Holly. I'm sorry, Sandra Holly. So, four of us are getting there to have tickets for them. All right, uh, Patricia. No, I was just reminding you of that. Oh, oh, okay. All right, anything? Something important on your agenda, we need to know about. Yes, ma'am. Those who are practicing, I 
also a Young Democrats of Georgia convention uh, in Atlanta in March, um, which is also being held by, like, uh, at this, like, uh, together at, with the Young Democrats of America convention. Uh, they're all happening at the same events in Atlanta in uh, March. I think it's March the 15th. I could be wrong about that date. Um, it's, Atlanta. it's $35 for entrance, um, and if it's a three-day event, so if you want to get a hotel, it's over $100 or a hotel room. Um, but Young Democrats, if you're, like, under... 40 or, or, or right, 40 or 35, um, it's open to you. So uh, please, please feel free. Look on Georgia YDS. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes, ma'am. Is it possible for all these events to be posted on our MCBC? Yes. That way people will be able to get the information. Yeah, yeah if okay. you would uh, email them to Laura or Harry, they would get on, mm -hmm. on Facebook yes. and on our website. I just I forgot about that. I've seen it on the Bernie Center, so I'm going to do a lot of things. Let's expensive. Right, convention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's expensive. Uh, it's like yeah, uh, most wealthy. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we have to make sure.
or your church name or your business name in great dark gear or whatever, anything you want to put on it, uh, four by eight is a fifty dollars and eight by eight is one hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And what group is this? We in the school alumni. Okay. And this is a fundraiser for our scholarship fund. Okay. All right. Again, take that up. Uh, email that information to Laura or to uh, her so we can put it on this website. I'm 
of chair. The new chair for the Dem Muskogee County Democratic Committee is Laura Walker. <laughs> First vice chair, congratulations to Darian Torbert. <laughs> Ms. Walker, would you stand? Oh, just come up front. Darian Torbert. <laughs> Okay, right here. Mm -hmm. Treasurer Marjorie Jackson. Second Vice Chair Sandra Ellison. First oh, Line Secretary uh, Tammy Bailey. Recorded Secretary Jeff Parker. All right, here are the new officers. Can I get a picture? Yes, please. For MCBC. Thank you all for your patience and participating. <laughs> Thank you so very much. All right, you have your so they will take over at the next meeting at the end of this meeting. All right, the new harvest is still there. Uh, he is, uh, we're, we're going to have a couple of things and then we'll be finished. I have to do this with Harbison and he wants to bring the words to you on his bottle of hand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, I'm going to bring you to the center of Harbison and the center of the center if you wanted to be here today to witness this process. Uh, those of you who don't know, like, I am Ed Jr. I was talking to John out the hallway. He said, you know, you're not Ed Harvest. <laughs> I said, yes, yeah, a recent trip to verify that I am Ed Jr. <laughs> uh, I know I work in obscurity. I work for the Department of uh, Human Services. I have been for the last 20 years. 
Uh, so if you've seen me in and about the communities in the 14 counties surrounding Georgia, I can tell you Democrats have a strong presence in those areas. My father wants you to know that uh, he may be outnumbered in the Senate, but he told me that they, all they needed was one good Marine. <laughs> <laughs> so for one service, we were to another. <laughs> Y'all keep fighting a good fight, and we'll see you out there in our community. Thank you so much. Thank you and the other members of the Tellers Tell Committee for uh, working with this election for us. And uh, okay, here they are. I hope everyone. Come on out. Who is that? Yeah, come on Thank out. Thank you. Been back to work. Come on. Thank you. I want to thank you, Dupree. Hey, I really want to motivate. your style. Um, I have seen you separate two men mm. verbally mm. Like <laughs> that. Mm. and I hope to remember, I don't need to remember that, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I do, I'm going to think of you, okay? You were awesome at that. I only have a couple of words to say. Thank you very much for allowing me to have this opportunity to work with you and to elect Democrats. That's the reason we're here. To elect Democrats at this level, at every level. Um, I am, and I'm keeping this super short because I, I'd rather communicate. Um, but that's the reason, that's what I want to talk to you about is communication. I need for everyone, all of the post uh, committee members and the executive board, to be good communicators. Mm -hmm. Check your email, yes. check your messages, um, because we are a body that is going to do things in advance, mm -hmm. but we're also a responsive body. And so if something happens and we need to communicate a quick change or a or anything, you know, that's how we're going to do it. So please do check your email, communicate with me back. Um, that way I'll be emailing you out within the next couple of days. Um, my contact information, every way you can contact me. And then also, I'd like to, you know, some of what was discussed at the planning board meeting are things that we're going to start with right away. So I just wanted to reassure you of that. I would like to have a little class on parliamentary procedures and uh, Robert Rules of Order so that we are all on the same starting point with that. Um, I'm going to survey you about how you like to communicate. Um, and what your preferences are for meeting times and places, just so that we can um, get that information and make the best decision possible about how to move forward for the, for the best attendance for everyone. Also, we'll be reviewing the committees and the subcommittees to make sure that we're not being redundant anywhere and that the work that we do is best suited towards moving forward and electing Democrats. And then same thing with the job descriptions, and we'll hopefully um, get bylaws from the DPG soon. If not, we will be you know, looking at and using the current ones as a guideline and just making, mm -hmm. making sure that they are working for our committee within those guidelines. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Harry, you okay, we gotta go. Library. You're right. right. Send it. Let's yeah. let's send it to me. But I will have a email group that will consist of all of the committee um, post holders and the executive board. So look for that, and let's let's just let's rock this thing. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna end it now. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've got 15 minutes to uh, make the room. We need to get food organized, chairs away, tables set back up. So any uh, anybody uh, in it not be open. Uh, any help you can give, please. We need help. 